Hello, and welcome to the Business of Happiness podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Taryn McCarthy, and today is going to be such a great day because you define your own success. I don't know if any of you have heard of this incredible story. I've been thinking so much about it in the recent weeks. It actually happened a little while ago. It was during the Paralympic events, and it happened during the marathon event. I don't know if any of you saw this. This incredible woman, the, all these women, incredible, just phenomenal. But actually, it wasn't the person who won the Paralympic marathon. It was the person who came in third, who made the headlines. Her name is Elena Congost, and she's from Spain, and she's blind. She was born with a genetic disorder that robbed her of her vision, and she runs with a support runner, which is completely allowed in the Paralympics for blind runners. And the way that they do this is they actually have a little rope. So they're tethered to somebody and they have this little rope and each, the only rule is that the other person holds on to their end of the rope and the runner herself is holding on to her end of the rope and you can't let go. And you're running and, and that's the guide so that you don't run into things or go off course. And, oh, she ran a phenomenal race. It was so imp impressive to watch her. And 10 yards from the finish line, her support runner, his name, I think his name is Mia Bruguera. I'm not sure about that. Also a phenomenal runner himself. Her support runner, 10 yards from the finish line, his legs started cramping and he actually started to fall. And she reached over to grab under his arm to hold him up. And in that split second, let go of her end of the rope. I mean, it was, if you watch it, you can look it up on YouTube. It is such a split second that you really have to rewatch it a couple times to even notice it. But she just went to grab for him to help him. And then they, you know, stumbled to the finish line and he made it through and she made it through and she got the bronze and it was a big, exciting event and, you know, so heroic phenomenal. This is a woman who, by the way, she won this event in 2016. And she took seven years off of running to focus on starting a family. And in that time, she and her husband had four children. <laughs> and she's come back now to run this event again. And she got bronze. It was amazing. It was incredible. And yeah, she was disqualified. She was disqualified. Can you believe it? that simply because she let go of that rope for a split second was hard to even witness, she was disqualified. And, you know, they went back to the judges and they tried to appeal the ruling because she didn't cheat. There was no cheating. She was being a human being. She was being kind and compassionate and caring and grateful. And somebody who was helping her was hurting. She went to help him. And not every runner runs with a guide who they have to pay attention to and be aware of. It's just so crazy to me that we hold these standards for ourselves of what we think success looks like. And that the moment we don't get that recognition from outside of us, we think that that success is gone. And I love the story because I'm completely reflecting that back to my own career in dentistry. And I'm asking you to do the same for yourself, not just within dentistry, but in your life. Nobody knows what you have gone through. Nobody knows the challenges, the obstacles that you have overcome. Nobody knows where you started from. Nobody knows everything that's happened along the way. And yet we compare ourselves by these standards that we think are even across the playing field. You know, after she appealed, Elena Congost, and they denied her the appeal, so no, she still doesn't have the bronze medal. She released this statement, and I and it's translated from Catalan, so I'm sure there's it's so much more beautiful in its an original language. But she said, finding your peace in the most turbulent moment and remembering that what you really are does not expire without doubts or reproaches. Who you really are does not expire. She is the woman who came in third 
oh, I'm tearing up in the Olymp- in the Paralympics, visually impaired. She is the woman who reached out from a very human perspective to support and help her guide. I mean, would we have wanted anything else? What are we asking? Literally, what is the... What are we asking here for her to drag him along and keep running in order to win that bronze? I mean, this metaphor I want you to take into your own life. What are we expecting of ourselves in order to call ourselves, quote unquote, successful, quote unquote, accomplished to the point where we can finally look back at ourselves and say, oh, my gosh, I've arrived. I'm here. I'm worthy. I'm good enough. Are we expecting ourselves to run that marathon blind after having had four children in seven years and then drag that guy across the finish line as he's fumbling and falling and having his own leg cramps? Is that what we're expecting of ourselves? Would that be a win in your book? So often we're looking to others to define our success or even just how we feel about ourselves. I mean, When do you do this in your everyday? Think about for a moment how often we put the way we feel about ourselves in the hands of the temperament of our patients in that any given day. I'm talking about people who are possibly in pain, who have their own histories of trauma, who have their own levels of being able to navigate emotional and mental well-being. Throw in there a little bit of dental trauma and phobia and white coat syndrome Now we expect every patient to be thanking us. You know, this is something I see in interviews all the time. Dentists who say, you know, it's really hard to go to work every day and hear the same thing. I hate being here. I hate coming to the dentist. I hope I never see you again. I hope I don't see you until next year for my annual cleaning. I mean, I've heard so many of us say, it's hard to hear that all day. And yes, it is. It is hard to hear that all day, which is why we get to define our own success. I'm going to go back to those words from Elena Congost. Finding your peace and remembering what you really are does not expire. Even if your patient says, I hate it here. I don't like you. Remembering that who and what you really are does not expire despite what the external evidence says. Even when that external evidence is your literal bank account. Oh, let's talk about that for a moment. How many times do we put our happiness in the hands of numbers in a bank account? And then not only that, but we look outside of ourselves to consultants or accountants or people who have run these statistical analyses across the country and say, what does the average orthodontist make? Or what is their overhead? And how do I compare myself to that? And that number can suddenly put us in a place of shame or self-judgment or not enoughness. Let's think about some other moments in time where we put our self-worth and how we see ourselves and whether or not we feel successful or worthy in the hands of other people. What about in the hands of your team? How many times are you creating your own idea of success about who you are, of worthiness about who you are, of enoughness about who you are based on your team members? I mean, we get this a lot. It makes so much sense that you would because we really value being good leaders, especially right now in the space where the buzz on the street is that it's hard to get good help, right? It's hard to keep. Retention is a buzzword for dentists right now. How do we keep team members happy? But even if you have a team mem- a team that is turning over every three months, boy, is that stressful. I totally get it but it has no indication of your worth. Finding your peace in the most turbulent moment and remember that who and what you really are does not expire even if every single one of your team members leaves. Imagine this, three days away from work, three days away from your regular life, from your family, 
from the day-to-day hustle and bustle to just rest and reconnect with you. Here's the truth. Nobody knows you like you do. Nobody knows the joys and the sorrows and the fears and the frustrations and the stresses and the overwhelm and the exhaustion and your patience and your team and your family. Nobody knows what you're going through better than you. Nobody knows what brings you joy and fuels you and fulfills you. Nobody knows your dreams and desires like you do. And the secret to how to access that beautiful wisdom inside of you, the guru inside of you, waits for you at the Empower Her Retreat. This incredible retreat happening this October 17th through 20th is an opportunity for you to fall back in love with yourself, to identify your directional compass, and to lean into trust, self-trust, the trust of that inner wisdom www.empowerherretreat.org. Join us there. Sign up. There are only a few spots left. This is your opportunity to change the direction of your life. Boom. Now let's talk about how often we put our sense of self-worth in the hands of our family or our friends or our community people who are not living our lives every single day. Nobody knows what you are going through. Nobody knows the years that you've passed over the past 10 10 years, decade, two decades, three decades. Nobody knows what you've gone through and the challenges that you've had to face. Nobody knows that you had four kids in seven years and now you're running the Paralympics blind and this gentleman's calf is failing. So why? Why don't we remember? It needs to be a constant reminder. And that's what I'm here to share with you today. You get to be the hero of your own story. And it has to be that way. Because we have to be the ones to remind ourselves because we are the only ones that know. When we reach for comparison outside of ourselves, we feel bad. When we look to arbitrary rules or standards, like this one of the Olympics, It misses the humanity within us. And that's the most important thing. You are not a robot and you don't want to be. You want to have feelings and experiences. You want to experience love and pain and grief and heartache and joy. We need to and we get to experience all of those beautiful human emotions because before we are dentists, we are humans. We forget that when we talk about ourselves as dentists, just like this Olympian, she was not recognized for her humanity. She's doing incredible things. The Olympic Games are to identify people who represent their countries in athletic feats that are outrageous beyond what the average man and woman can do. She did it. And she was not recognized for the very human component of who she is, but you get to, you get to remember that for yourself. You get to remember, as she said, that who you are does not expire and reminding yourself that you get to be the hero of your own story is so important because only you can write that book. Only you can write that book because only you know what you've gone through. So What does that look like? It looks like remembering to celebrate yourself. I don't know what Elena did after the Olympics, but I sure as hell hope she threw herself one hell of a party, one incredible celebration, worthy of the entire country attending, because she deserves that recognition. And why does self-celebration work so well? It works because biologically, when we celebrate ourselves, even with just a pat on your own back or a recognition, Taryn, you did an amazing job today. Do you know how far that goes? Biologically, you give yourself dopamine, serotonin, even oxytocin is released. You give yourself the feel-good chemicals that we're all chasing every day. You get to do that for yourself simply by self-congratulating. 
and that judgment that we put on ourselves for that, right? Like, oh, I shouldn't, I shouldn't. It's selfish. It's weird to say congratulations to myself. Oh my gosh, can we let that go? Can we just drop that? Because if you can give yourself permission to celebrate yourself on a regular basis for the big and the small things, you are such a better dentist. You are such a better leader. You are such a better parent. If we can just let go of that one weird little judgment about ourselves, that self celebration is selfish or wrong or weird, I don't even know. Sophomoric? Seems like something an infant needs. No, you need it. What is another reason you need it? Because it boosts your sense of self-significance. And significance is one of the six basic human needs in human needs psychology, along with growth and stability and variation and contribution. It's one of the foundational parts of who we are, psychologically what we need in order to feel good, significance. And you can gain significance in many ways, believe me. You can gain significance by yelling at the top of your lungs. If you stand in your office and you throw an instrument, guess who's the most significant person in the room in that moment? Yeah, all eyes turn towards you. If you stand in a room and yell at someone, guess who's the most significant? We have a human need for significance, but we don't have to choose those actions that are hurtful or that go against our own value system or that don't make us feel good. We actually get to choose where we find significance and how we celebrate it. And celebration supports that sense of significance. Taryn, you did such a good job today. Literally making that a part of your practice on your ride home. Going through the day and recognizing, oh my gosh, I'm so proud of you for doing that new technique that you learned about in the conference this past weekend. I'm so proud of you for showing up to work and doing your breathing exercises and staying calm. I'm so proud of you for actually taking a lunch break. I'm so proud of you for reaching and helping that man when his leg was cramping before you crossed the finish line. Do you know how powerful that is? Recognizing and appreciating your own humanity as a dentist. (sighs) Significance. And you know, another reason why self-celebration works, it actually fuels motivation. This is why when kids are learning to walk, we, we clap and we go, oh my God, good job, good job, good job. When you're a baby learning to walk, do you know how scary that is? You have no core strength. You have no leg strength. Actually, babies, some of them have really good core strength. <laughs> what, what am I talking about? But you don't have good leg strength yet. You don't have great balance yet. And going from here to the couch is terrifying. And you're going to fall. It's not an if. It's a when. You are going to fall. What gets them through? It's the celebration of the people around them. Oh my God, you just took three steps. Yay! You feel good. We don't say to them, nope, not good enough. Just fix your form a little bit. Here, let me show you how. And look at that baby over there doing so much better. And that baby started walking three months younger than you did. That's not motivational. Why do we do it to ourselves? It's the celebration we get to do. Once again, You're carrying it with you every moment of the day. You get to celebrate yourself. So it actually fuels motivation, not the opposite. We don't chase ourselves with a stick. We encourage ourselves by celebrating ourselves. And another reason why celebration works is because it literally makes you feel good. I mean, isn't that why we're here at the Business of Happiness? It pulls you up. So even when you're in a really rough spot, And let's remember those words again from Elena, finding your peace in the most turbulent of times and remembering that what you really are does not expire. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter what you did last week. It doesn't matter how many mistakes you've made. It doesn't matter what your patient said. It doesn't matter how many team members have left. It doesn't matter how loud your daughter cried when you left for work this morning. Remembering who you are never expires. And valuing and celebrating yourself is one of the most powerful techniques that we have. 
to continue to do what we do, to continue to serve the people we serve. Just for imagine, I want you to, for a moment, I want you to imagine two people. One of them is celebrating herself every day. The other one is beating herself up every day. Which one do you think is a better dentist? I mean, and now I'm meaning comparison wise, like literally, you know, putting them in some kind of a study in terms of the quality of the care. Which one of these two women do you think is happier? Which one of these two women do you think feels good in her body every day? Which one of these two women has flourishing re relationships? When we self-celebrate, we support ourselves in all aspects of our lives. And it gets to be a habit that you can tap into and turn on. But like every habit, it takes a little bit of practice. So I invite you to just remember those words from this incredible woman who just ran a marathon despite being blind, who just gave birth to four children in seven years despite having no vision, who just represented her country, who just helped a man who was helping her achieve and live out a dream of hers. Finding your peace, number one, and remembering that who you really are does not expire and that you get to define your own success. You get to be the hero of your own story and only you can write that book. Remember, when you feel good, my friend, that's when you can do good. And you have within you everything you need to congratulate and celebrate and turn on that dopamine and serotonin and remind yourself that who you are is a miracle. Have a phenomenal week. Hey, beauty, if you enjoyed this episode, then like and subscribe to the show and receive this beautiful message of empowerment, remembering what you are capable of and the purpose you serve in this world every single week. And if you know of a colleague who needs this message, share this episode with her. This is how we raise the collective in healthcare reminding one another and supporting one another. Community is the answer. This is how we grow it. And lastly, I invite you to a phenomenal in-person event this October, 2024, the Empower Her Retreat, exclusively for women in medicine and dentistry on the beach. It will change your life. And I cannot wait to see you there. Check out the details in the show notes and have a phenomenal day remembering that you are enough. <laughs>